Galatians chapter 5. It's good to have you here. My name is Jared, if you don't know. And I cry a lot. It used to only start with things like Father of the Bride movies. And then I got spirit filled and, and now I just cry all the time. So, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Jesus, we want to honor your truth, your word today. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would illuminate truth in our hearts and our minds. Speak to us now in this, in this moment, in this time. Lord, we don't need wisdom of men. We don't need enticing words or one-liners. God, we need, to, we need a revelation of your truth that we're about to read. Lord, that your word would come alive into our hearts and that we would be able to tap into the mind of Christ that you desire to give your people. Teach us now. We love you and ask this in your name we pray. Amen. Galatians 5.22 says this. If you haven't been with us, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, it took us about several weeks to finally get to the fruit of the Spirit. And now that we've gotten to the fruit of the Spirit, I thought we were going to be done way quicker. But now it's going to take us several weeks to get out of the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> Uh, because we're talking about something that's a little bit more complex than just trying hard. The fruit of the Spirit, as we read, and let's continue to read it as we do every week, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against there is such no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. And so as things are removed, it's to put on a new thing, as Paul would say in other writings. He says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. And so we've been talking about this idea of it's not fruits, plural, but it is fruit, singular. And so it, it is not for, uh, you know, Grady to have love and uh, Pastor, you know, Devin, he has some joy and, and, and praise God to rail because he just, he went in my eyesight. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. It's just my ADD. Uh, he's got some, some peace and, 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 you know, like, and we just all got different kinds and, and maybe some of us have more than others. No, 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 no. It is fruit. And to fruit, there are certain tastes, even in one piece of fruit. And so to this piece of fruit, there is a uh, different taste uh, palettes and figures on, on the fruit of the spirit. And so uh, the, the intention is that every Christian would operate in the fruit, all of it, that we have access to operate and to walk in this type of fruit in our lives. But the hard reality is, is that we don't grow fruit by trying hard. In other words, you just can't try hard to love. You just can't try hard to have joy. Well, you just need to pray more. And just if you'll just pray hard, you'll finally have peace. I mean, I think prayer is really important, but, but it's not on, on you pressing the right buttons like an ATM machine and expecting something to come out from God. Like that, that's not what it is. It's actually you giving up. <laughs> it's actually you yielding what we talked about, right? So we, we talked about what it is to yield in faith to the work of the Spirit, so when you put aside your strong arming people and strong arming God and just trying to be a good person, this is not a morality message to, to teach behavior modifications. This is literally a faith thing that says, I believe that God is good and that he is love and that he is joy and that he is peace and he is goodness and kindness and gentleness and long suffering and self-control. God is those things. And the cool thing is, is God desires, what, what a word, uh, where did he go? Uh, he, did he step out? Wait, I'm looking. I lost you. Oh, wait, there you are. What a word. Thank you for that word that it, it's not always, sometimes we, we think of God like it's just something that we're giving him. But the truth is, is that he's, he's pouring it back into us and he's saying, hey, cool. I, I want you to operate in love, but God's like, can I give you my love first? I want you to operate in joy, but, but how about take my joy first? right? Like that God is wanting to pour these things out on us. And the only thing that we have to do is to have a field, to have a space for those seeds to be sown into us. We're saying, yes, God, we receive that. We want that. We desire that. We desire to operate in these things. So Holy Spirit, do what you do best and begin to grow these things in me. And so for a couple of weeks, we talked about love, what that is. We talked about um, uh, Brett preached on Brett preached on a lot, but he, he talked about kind or gentleness, uh, be having a teachable spirit. Uh, last week, we covered joy. 
and everybody danced and we had a good time and there's joy in the Lord and praise God. I pray you still find joy. And, but I, I want to kind of move into the next one and just kind of see where we land. I know it's 1147. So I really just want to read you a lot of scripture this morning, but let's talk about peace this morning. So the fruit of the spirit, one of the aspects of how it tastes is it tastes like peace, right? Uh, we've been saying Psalm 34, 8 says this, so taste and see that the Lord is good. And so let's talk about what this peace in the spirit is. If you're looking at notes, I've got notes on the hub for you. If you want to take a look at those, I, I gave you a, a, a kind of definition, but then we're going to read scripture to back that up with. Um, or really, we read, I read a lot of scripture to create a definition. Uh, so in the in the Hebrew uh, is where we get the word shalom. And you'll hear that over in like the Middle East or, or if you're taking discipleship leader group training, you'll hear it from Pastor Harrison every weekend when he's like Shabbat Shalom and when we're practicing Sabbath and, and doing these things. But shalom is where we get the word peace. And, and, it, and it's a form of greeting, but, but it comes with this idea of, of covenant type relationship with people, but not just with people, with God as well. And so um, here's, here's the working definition I've got for you, though. It's not just freedom from trouble. People, when, when they think about getting peace, um, the, what they desire is, you know, relief from maybe a financial burden or relief from a physical ailment or, or pain um, or, or, or just peace in times of trouble of going through tribulations and trials. And, and that's, that's good. We, we have um, you know, like we should pray for that kind of peace to want peace of mind and, 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 and to, to have like rest. But there is something inwardly that God desires for you that's greater than just an external peace. Like, oh, I got my finances together, so I'm at peace. Oh, I finally got married, so I'm at peace. Oh, you know, like our kids are growing up and they're doing pretty good in school, so now I got peace, right? That there is, as the song would say, uh, the old song we sing, as I've got peace like a river, some of us, we have droplets of peace in our lives, praise God, that we are trying to find moments of just relief. But in the spirit, there is something that the Lord desires to give you that is like a flowing river that does not run dry. It's more than just relief from trouble. But here's what it is. It is an assurance that comes from resting in the truth that our relationship with God is made right through Jesus. When the Bible speaks of peace primarily through the scriptures, it is not so much speaking of peace more so about you and other people and human situations as it is referring to peace with God. From this type of, of mindset, from this type of experience is from where all peace flows. Is our understanding of of this relationship with God and that it was destroyed because of sin. The Bible literally tells us that we were enemies of God. Enemies of God, right? How many of you, you're excited about tax season? Not a lot of people, right? Some of you might be because you got some earned child income credit or whatever, but, but for some of you, 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 you don't like tax season because you're like, you already taxed me in my check and then you tax me when I go buy things and now I got to pay taxes at the end of the year, right? <clears throat> my wife worked in another state this year and the state of Georgia did not like that. And so they, they fined us for it. <laughs> they were just like, we're, we're going to make sure we get, we get that money out of y'all, right? So like when you're, when you're paying your, your taxes and you sometimes get that bill or you see that thing, like there's a pressure that comes with that. Like some of you, you didn't even know that you had a debt on your head until you filled in the paperwork, right? So some of you use TurboTax or maybe you use something else, H&R Block or whatever. Uh, this is not a promo for any of those unless some of them want to sponsor us. Um, I'll start wearing like a TurboTax t-shirt on Sundays. Um, not really, I'm joking. I can't be bought. Um, but many of us were surprised when we see that number, right? At the end of the year, we're like, oh my goodness, right? Well, in our faith, like there are a lot of people walking around, they don't realize that there's a debt on their head. They don't, they don't realize that, that, that they've actually died in Christ. Like they've died in the sense of they've lost a relationship with God and God, because he's just, and listen, he's loving and he's gracious and he's merciful, but he's also righteous and holy and just, and the Bible says vengeance will be his. And so those that sin against him, because even the psalmist says, only you, God, have I sinned against. 
No, of course we can hurt other people in our sin, but the truth is, is that even our sin flows from to him first before it impacts anybody else. That this is what godly sorrow is, is that I've offended God first. And so because of that offense, if we were to ever to go into a courthouse, if somebody wronged us or stole from us or, 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 or hurt us, we would want to go to a courthouse and have a just judge. And we would want that judge to do us right and to give us justice. In fact, we live in a culture that cries for it, that desires it for justice. This is, this is an innate thing that the Lord has put in us. But also, we must also cry for the justice even of our soul. That because of our sin, there is a debt on our head. And because of what Jesus has done, this is why we take communion every week. It's a reminder of what invites us back to the table. It's a reminder of the communion that God desires with us. Jesus gave his life for us. This is not just an Easter time message. This is a I need this everyday reminder message of who I am in Christ. This is where peace flows from. When I know what I've done, not just the things that you might know about, but the things that have even been in secret, the things that, 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 you know, they say that there's like three different levels of our personality. There's the thing that we want people to see. There's the, there's the thing that, you know, maybe close people around us, they kind of see us. There's the thing with like maybe our immediate family that they kind of see all, a lot more of our flaws, but, the, but there could be even like this like personal, the, the thing that we don't even want the closest people to see about us, like God sees that. The things that we keep hid in our minds, the things that we keep hid in the dark, the Bible says will come to light and will be judged. And some people say, well, I just need to be a good person. Well, your goodness and your works are put on a scale. Let me say it again. Your goodness, your works are put on a scale and they're judged by God's holiness, by God's standards, not by the person that you don't like or that you think is a bad person. That's what, that's what religious people do. Religious people say, who can I find that's got more of a jacked up life than I do? And then, you know, like we, me and Katie, we over here, and, and, and if we want to say that our marriage is good, all we got to do is watch Love is Blind. And we'll watch some of them people fall in love on that Netflix show. I don't encourage it. Don't watch it. But it is crazy. And you'll be watching these people fall in love and talk. And like, and the whole time Katie and I are just, yeah, we're just watching like these people, you know what will fix all this? They need Jesus, right? Like, it is wild. But it would be easy for us to just look at people who, who we would feel like don't have it together and say, we're better than them. But that's not the scale in which that we are judged by. We are judged by a scale of God and his holiness and his righteous. And guess how the scale falls, my friends? He's greater. And so what do we do with that? When we're left with that revelation... It can be a little daunting. So some people try really hard. Some people just give up and just say, well, I'm just going to live how I want to live. Well, the scriptures teach us that obviously Jesus comes to make a way for us to live a holy life, to live a sinless life, to die on a cross for our sins, to rise again three days later in order that we might find peace with God. This is the greatest peace that you can find is knowing the peace that you have with God. Let me tell you what this peace tastes like. It tastes like this. Philippians 4, 7 says this, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In John 14, Jesus tells his disciples of that peace that he desires for them to have. He says, this peace I want to leave with you. What type of peace? You see, Jesus had not yet died on the cross yet. He had not risen. And so he was telling them of something that would come through the good news of his death, burial, and resurrection. He's saying, hey, I'm going to give you something that you're going to just love. It's going to flow like a river. It's going to be amazing. He says, I want to give you a peace. And he says, I give this to you, not as the world gives it to you. Not as the world gives it to you. Again, it's not, just a, it's not just a peace of mind because your finances are in order and you can pay your taxes. It's not just a peace of mind because your kids made the little league team, right? Like this is a deeper peace. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You heard me said, I'm going away. Why? Because I will come back to you. If you love me, you would have greatly rejoiced because I'm going to the Father for the Father is greater than I. So Jesus is telling them, he's like, I want to give you this peace. You're going to find joy in it. And the joy is going to come from a place of who Jesus is to us. Like what Jesus actually means to us. What he's done, what he's represented, what, what he's accomplished. 
what we believe he will accomplish one day. To follow Jesus is to know all that he's done. And so, so many times people follow an, ide- an ideology or, or, or an opinion. that They follow concepts and ideas. But the truth is, is that we're, we're following Jesus because we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We believe that Jesus, what he says he will do, what he's done, we believe is true. Like we're, we're putting our faith in Jesus. And from this place of following Jesus, the blessing of it is, is you get a covering of that. That's what makes us righteous before God is because of Jesus. We get covered, right? So as I was thinking about this message, and this is kind of what I want to close this with, is just reading some scripture, because I could try and articulate it, and I'm probably not even articulating it in that great of a way because I haven't read enough scripture yet, and so I apologize for that. But let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to leave us with as I was praying about what to do next with the fruit. Uh, Pastor Harrison's teaching next week. You teach whatever you want to teach, brother. I don't think we're going to get finished, but, you know, be free to do whatever you feel led. So I, I just want to just finish up with this idea of peace, but I want to leave you with a lot of scripture to meditate on this week. Because, um, again, I, I, don't want to just, I don't want to just rush through the fruit of the Spirit and be like, you know, hey, yeah, right? Just walk in peace, Caroline, right? It's easy. Just have peace. Peace. Be with you, Right? And with you as well, right? Like, it's so easy for us to be so churchy in church and just use these languages. Like, yeah, I got peace. Like, do you? I want to wrestle with this stuff more. I want to wrestle with this idea of like, I've been a Christian for 20 years now. I got saved when I was 16 when I was holding my oldest son in the hospital room as a 16-year-old, wondering, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I have remembered what's been told to me about what Jesus has done. And I put my faith in that and I decided to follow him. And over the 20 years of following Jesus, I have to stop sometime. You hear the phrase stop and smell the roses. I have to stop sometimes and ask myself, if I'm not operating in the fruit, it's not because God doesn't want to give it to me. If earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their kids, how much so our heavenly father? That's what the scriptures teach us, right? So our heavenly father desires to give us good things. That's even what it means to be charismatic. Charismatic believes in grace gifts. It's saying, I believe God has gifts for me. The fruit of the Spirit is a gift. He desires to give me things. He's not withholding. He's not like, well, if you just will try harder, I'll give you some peace. No, 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 no. He just wants to lavish his goodness on top of us. So the issue is not if God's given it. The the issue is if I'm receiving it. And when I don't feel peace... And when I don't feel joy and when I don't feel to love and and, and I'm not and I'm not operating in that, I have to really stop and spend some time like repenting. And what I mean by repenting is the word means to change the way that I I think. Like, what is my motivation coming from of why I'm not operating in love? Why am I not operating in joy? When when I get in arguments with my wife, because I do, because we're human. I know, yeah, right, it's amazing. No, it's not. But when we get in arguments and we talk and, and, we're, and we're working through difficult things and, and I just feel that flesh side of me rise up that's like, I want to be right. I want to I wanna win this argument. How many of you know you can win an argument but still lose? And so when I'm talking to her, I just feel like the Holy Spirit sometimes just whispers, will you just shut up? <laughs> will you just hush? Will you just listen? Will you just try and see it from her perspective? Will you try and give her the benefit of the doubt? I do this with my kids. I do this with my church family, with leaders, with like the, 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 the crazy thing is like the Lord is like wanting me to do, just walk in that with people. Like that's the cool part, but I'll never walk in it with my wife. I'll never walk in peace with my children. I'll never walk in peace with you until I walk in peace with God first. This is where it flows from. So 1 Corinthians 1, we'll get out of here. Paul opens up many of his greetings, many of his letters with a shalom, with a peace be with you. And I know many times when people teach their books of the Bible, they skip over the intro part because they're like, oh, it's the boring part. Let's get to the fun stuff. But I'm here to tell you today that if it wasn't good, it wouldn't have gotten put in there. So the intro of each of these books is just really good. It's just really good. We should meditate on it more. Don't miss the good stuff. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 real quick. 
Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and to our brothers, he says, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ, called to be saints together with all those who have uh, in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Verse three, grace to you and what? And peace, shalom from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we could just stop there, but, but he's actually, in each of these letters, he's going to tell us a place from where that peace flows from. Look at verse 4. He says, I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech, and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ, <coughs> excuse me, was confirmed among you. Baby, you give me that water. So that you are not lacking in any gift, you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end. Guiltless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called to fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So he talks about, hey, peace be with you. Why can there be peace with you? I want you to spend time meditating on all these scriptures this week. Peace be with you. Why? Because God's faithful. So if peace will flow from a place of knowing that God is faithful. Look at 2 Corinthians 1. Same thing. Opens it up with the... Why, you got a question, brother? Or are you just praising him? I want to stop and answer your question. I do. I love that our kids are in our room. I don't care if he's raising his hand. I think it's great. You good? You with me? Thanks, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says this again, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to Timothy, our brother, to the church that is in Corinth. Verse 2 Grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So where's that peace flowing from? Well, he's going to tell us a little bit more. All we got to do is keep reading. Verse 3, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction, so that we might also comfort those who are in affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. So where does peace come from? Peace comes from not only knowing that God is faithful, but also knowing that God desires to comfort us in our time of affliction. And that from that place of comfort, we actually can become mercy people like God has been a mercy person to us and we can comfort other people. And so there's comfort in that peace that we can find with God. Galatians 1, what we've been studying, he also opens up with the same thing in verse 3. He says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. There's peace because of the gospel of Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 1, same thing in verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So in other words, where does peace come from? Peace comes from a place of knowing that we are already blessed with spiritual blessings. Philippians chapter 1. Again, verse 2, grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you always, every prayer of mine for you making my prayer with joy. Why? Because of your partnership of the gospel from the first day until now. So peace comes from doing what we're called to do. Sometimes in our, in our lives, like we feel like we'll find peace whenever we get the right job. Peace whenever we find the right calling. Can I tell you that your calling, your purpose for your life is to partner in the gospel? That's, that's your purpose. It's like, well, I, I, want, I want to be a CEO. Cool, bro. But whether you're just a grunt worker, you're, you're all called to the same thing as followers of Jesus, to partner in the gospel. That's where you find peace. The thing is, one day I won't be a lead pastor. Somebody else will take my job. Brett, you going to take my job? Is that what you're here for? You're young. You're trying to take my job. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I want you to like, I want, I want the next generation to come and to take over. I'm going to get old one day and slower and, and not be able to think right. And, and, and I, and I pray that, that I've shepherded in a way that you don't have to put together a pulpit committee and find a pastor, but there'll be somebody that'll take my place and just naturally take our church into the next season. That's what I want. If I were to find my identity, even in my pastoring in that title, then I will be disappointed one day when I'm not. So, so my, my identity is not found in that title, just like my peace can't be found in that title. I love pastoring and I love preaching the word of God. But regardless of whether I have a title or not, I am called to partner in the good news of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I can do that in any season. I can do that with any title. 
I can do that in any age. I could be poor. I could be rich. And I get to partner in the kingdom of God with the gospel. Colossians 1. Colossians 1 and verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. Again, he gives his title, verse 2. And then he gives his greeting. To the saints and the faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always give thanks for you. Why? Look at verse 6. He says, as indeed the whole word, it is bearing fruit and increasing. He says, there's peace and I can find peace and comfort. Why? Because if seeds get sown, I can guarantee that there's going to be fruit that comes and that fruit's going to increase. It's good seed. It's good ground. It's going to increase. I want to encourage you that as you are desiring the fruit of the spirit in your life, the good thing is, is that God's going to be faithful and he's going to produce. You're not going to have to fake it. I love that in our church. I love that we don't have to fake it. Listen, I know I, we would like last week, we was jumping all around. We'll clap our hands. We'll do all that. If you don't feel led to do that, don't do it. I want to champion you. I want to beseech you. I want to beseech you to, and urge you to raise your hands and clap your hands if, if maybe you need a little bit of encouragement from a brother in Christ to worship the King of Kings. But if the Holy Spirit's just like, I want you to get small and quiet, then be small and quiet. But if he's telling you to worship loud and clap your hands and clap, clap your hands and be loud. Listen, th this, is, this is this concept is that the spirit is working in all different kind of ways in all of our lives. But the thing that we can be encouraged is, is that the spirit of God wants to work in all of our lives. And it may look different, but let's spur one another on to see that. First Thessalonians chapter one. First Thessalonians chapter one. I mean, all you gotta do is just keep going to a new book. Again, Paul introduces himself. Verse one, he says, grace to you and peace. Why? He says, we give thanks to God always for you all, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith, your labor of love, your steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus. We've taught through the book of 1 Thessalonians before, and we know that there is these concepts in 1 Thessalonians and 1 Corinthians of faith, hope, and love. And he was like, and I see it in your church. I see success in your church. That's the success metrics that we use. And so this is where we find our peace from. We don't find our peace from our church growing because of numbers. We don't find our peace in knowing that our church is growing just because the finances are good or just because we got the right type of person or because we have right programming or the right groups that we're having midweek. That's not where we're finding our peace as a church from. We are finding our peace from what? From faith. Faith in who? In Jesus, our hope. Where's our hope found? In Jesus and our love. Where's our love come from? From Jesus, that's so we can love others. That's where this peace flows from. 2 Thessalonians chapter one. Grace to you. Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse three, he says, we all want to give thanks for you brothers as right because your faith is growing abundantly. Verse four, I like what he says. He says, there's steadfastness and there's faith in all of your persecutions and in afflictions that you are enduring. So there's peace from a growing faith. First Timothy chapter one. I mean, you just read them on. We're gonna close for time's sake, but as you just read through each of these introductions, you'll see these beautiful things. He charges them in first Timothy. He's like, hey, you find peace from preaching the right gospel. And he's like, you also find peace from correcting the wrong gospel to encourage others not to follow a false gospel. In 2 Timothy, he says to flame the fan of his calling. In Philemon, he says that there's a comfort of love that comes and, and gives us peace. Here's the idea. Romans 5 says this. He says, we've been justified in our faith and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. But the greatest peace that you can have is being in right relationship with Christ. And God's desire through Christ, through Jesus, is for us to see that peace is available. He wants you to walk in peace. He doesn't want, want to walk you burdened anymore. And so I just want to close this. I just want to close this with just an opportunity. Why don't you stand to your feet of just, if you're here today, ha <laughs> ha. Can we just do this just really practically? Because I know that there are people that, that gather in Christian faith communities and they, and they carry shame with them and they carry, um, you know, their past or whatever it is. But if you're following Jesus, if you put your faith in, what, in who Jesus is, God doesn't want you to walk in shame or guilt. 
Some of you, you came from legalistic backgrounds and church cultures that are just like, you know, shame and guilt and all of those things are, are, are really uh, control tactics in order to, to keep you to submit. But that's not how God works. God is not looking at you and saying like, well, you know, you did pretty good as a Christian this week, but, you know, we still know you got that drinking problem. Like he, he, he's, he's, in fact, what he's doing for you is going to war with those things for you to put it to death. He's not going to war with you. You're not. It, see, when you when you decide to follow Jesus and put your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you, you make a commitment to follow Him. You don't become His enemy anymore. It's 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 Satan. It's it's your sin nature that Jesus is like, hey, you got somebody fighting for you now. Why? That so you can live in peace with Him. Does that make sense? And so what I want you to do is is like. I need you to operate in this aspect of the fruit because you are never going to be set free until you just receive the, the good things that God has spoken over you that's, that, that's speaking over your life right now, peace. To say, God is not at war with you. And he's not lurking in every corner looking to, ah, I got you. No, 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 no. He, he wants to walk in fellowship and communion with you. The whole story of the Bible is like this beautiful story of God's desire to be in communion with us in the garden. He came in the cool of the day and we lost that and God's desire to get us back to that in communion with us. He, he, he is not the time. I know. Listen, I just feel this. I know we got to get out of here. If you got to leave, leave. But I just I know there's if you're in the room, you have equated your relationship with a friendship that has hurt you and damaged your life with a parent that has mistreated you and you've equated that to God and you're like, I just know God's going to turn on me and let me down eventually. And his heart is, is that he just wants to, he really wants to speak peace over you. He is not looking to get after you. That's not God's heart. You're like, yeah, but what about the Old Testament? The Old Testament is a beautiful picture of his holiness. The Old Testament is a beautiful picture of his justice. We want him to be a holy, just God. We want him to be right. And it shows our sin, it shows our wickedness, that even in the midst of that, God has given them in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, even to this day, an invitation to welcome us in to say, if you want to do it on your own works, this is what it'll lead you to. This is the lie that twists you to say that you have to just behave your modification and then you'll have peace with God. No, 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 it's not that. It's an invitation to say that your God has made a way to speak peace over you. You're not at war with him anymore. You can be free. And so whatever that shame is, whatever that thing is that you maybe even hold on to, I get it. I'm a glutton for punishment too. I can operate in that way sometimes. I'm just like, yeah, but I'm just, no, 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 no. And I just feel like the Lord is just saying, no, he wants to be good with you. Would you just receive his peace this morning? Lord Jesus, I pray over your people. Your word is faithful. We thank you for these letters that we can look to. Lord, that it's not by chance that you're opening up with, with, with terms like grace and peace that you speak over people before you speak anything else, God. And I just pray and I just speak grace and peace over these people, over the people of God here at 1116 Church. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you, see, would you receive it this morning? He's not at war with you today. For those that love him, for those that have put their faith in him, he's not at war with you. You're a son. You're a daughter. It's already, it's, already, it's already been spoken over our church earlier by the Spirit of the Lord to say, you're welcomed. He's speaking it back over you. He's speaking peace over you and saying, I, I, I want you. If you're here today and maybe you've never done that before, you may feel like, hey, you know what? I, I may be an enemy of God. Listen, it does not have to stay that way. Your sin separates you. But Jesus comes to reconcile and to bridge that gap. And there's no magical prayer. I mean, I could tell you some things that you can pray, but really it's your faith that ignites something inside of you that awakens a dead thing and makes it come alive. And here's what it is. It's trusting Jesus, following Jesus, believing Jesus. Believing what? That he's God. Believing that he died on the cross for your sin. Believing that he rose again. He's not dead. He's still alive. He rules and reigns as king. He's holy. <laughs> he's coming back. Like Jesus, not just some generic version of God, but like specifically Jesus is God. And the question is, do you want to follow him today?
And if you want to follow him, the invitation's open and the welcome is yes. The welcome is I want you. The welcome is through faith. You can be a part of his family. And so if that's you this morning, maybe you've been an enemy of God, be a friend of God today just through faith and say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. I want to give up my way and follow his way. And if that's you this morning, I would encourage you to find one of our pastors, find somebody in our church that you know maybe is a Christian and ask some questions. I want to create an invitational culture that's just like, all right, I'm good now. That's it. No, 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 no. It's giving your life to say, I'm going to follow Jesus from here on out. And that's a process. The Lord will work on you. He's going to change your life for the good, I think. I love my life with Jesus. Uh, And I would just encourage you and champion that on. But whatever the need is, know that you can come and pray with others before you leave today. And, but just know that we love you this morning. And um, Jesus, first of all, we love you and we thank you for your peace that you speak over us, God. And so be with your people as we leave this place. And may they just be covered this week in your peace and your love and your joy. We ask it in your name we pray. Amen.